Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing. And today's thing requires just a little bit of context. So a couple months ago, an LGR viewer named Daniel came across this little box and couldn't find much information about it, but was intrigued since it seemed to have both an NES controller and an AT-style keyboard connector on it. So he said he'd send it my way if I wanted to check it out. I did, so he did, and I got it, and I was stumped as well. Other than the GameStar logo, a serial number, and some FCC ID information on the back, there's not much to go on. But then after a bit of research, I found out that it was manufactured in Taiwan on behalf of Zhao Dian Enterprise Company Limited. And apparently they made all sorts of input devices, or at least they registered a bunch of them. But more importantly, I found out that this is only one piece of an obscure retro product puzzle. And this is how it all comes together. Say hello to the Dynapoint GameStar, the so-called programmable game controller from 1993. And it is indeed an adapter that allows for Nintendo Entertainment System controllers to be used over an IBM PC AT compatible keyboard port. But it also came with its own NES compatible game controller, which is where they decided to stick the branding. Hence why the adapter box is so short on information, I suppose. Not only that, but it also comes with its own software to program the GameStar box itself and make use of those buttons on the front. So I'm glad I was able to track down the whole package here because I wasn't able to find a single archive of the software online. <laughs> and all this marketing copy on the back of the box is just precious. The sophistication of PC games demand better game controllers, which explains why you will appreciate how GameStar puts your game button directly at your fingertips. Yep, that totally explains it, loud and clear. I also like how this sticker proudly proclaims how the product was assembled in the USA, right above the fine print that says it was actually made in Taiwan. Not that this is uncommon or anything, but the practice of saying something is made in the USA even though it was only the final place of assembly always struck me as a bit pointless. So yeah, now that I have the complete package about the only question that remains is how much this cost back in 1993, and I have no idea. I'm sure it's something I could find if I dig through enough physical magazine archives, but it's probably not worth my time. So on the off chance anyone already knows how much it cost in 93, do leave me a comment since I'm curious. All right, let's go ahead and get this opened up and see what you get inside. First up are the controller and the adapter itself, the latter of which I already had, but it's nice to have another one just in case something's wrong with one of them. Oddly enough, this one that's supposedly brand new has this kind of gold bronze discoloration on part of it, almost like paint over spray of some kind. It's not in the other one, so who knows what that is. Anyway, you get the three buttons on top here for programming keyboard commands, then the NES controller and AT keyboard pass through on the back. Then there's the Dynapoint controller itself, which despite its six buttons is just an NES compatible gamepad, and it seems the model number is DYJP0001. And looking online I see that finding this controller without the adapter is pretty commonplace, so it makes sense there's so little information about this kit. And as far as how it feels, <laughs> well, it feels like a cheap third-party controller, all right. Lightweight, plasticky, although somewhat ergonomic since it has some girth and cutouts for your fingers to sit in around back. But man, that D-pad is absolutely one of the worst I have ever had the displeasure of placing my thumb on, and those buttons aren't much better. It's also kind of a weird layout with the start and select buttons right above A and B, although it's kind of nice that it has turbo buttons for A and B off to the right as well, but again, they're in an unconventional, almost vertical layout? Who knows though, maybe it'll surprise me when I actually use it. You also get a high density five and a quarter inch floppy disk containing the utility software, and I sure do hope this works because it's literally the only copy I've come across physically or otherwise. And sadly, it doesn't seem to have come with the promised shareware version of Wolfenstein 3D, unless it's on the utility utility disk as well, which that's possible since the 1.0 shareware release of Wolf 3D is only 650 kilobytes when compressed. And finally you get the 12 page user's guide, which is a bit more than you might normally get with an NES controller or even an adapter for one. That makes sense, I mean most of this is taken up with information on how to program the device using the GameStar software for MS-DOS. And once again, I enjoy the product descriptions on the part of Dynapoint here. Thank you for purchasing GameStar, the programmable game controller for the PCs. This revolutionary new product is designed to provide serious game players with enhanced response for joysticks and other input devices. 
all bold claims, but as a serious player of the PCs, I am prepared for the enhanced response. Oh, and hey, I didn't notice this little doohickey earlier. Turns out that it comes with a little plastic joystick nub that you just shove into the D-pad's hole. Mm, I'm not sure if that's any better or worse, but I suppose we'll see soon enough. So yeah, at this point, we're ready to get it running. All you gotta do is plug in your 5-pin AT Keyboard's DIN connector, or a PS2 keyboard with the appropriate adapter, then plug in the GameStar's keyboard cable into your PC, and then plug in the controller to the adapter, and now it's time for DOS. All right, everything's all hooked up and ready to go, hopefully, and got the disc of the drive. Let's see if it works, fingers crossed. It's a good sign, and yep. And right away I see that Wolfenstein 3D folder, so that answers that question. It does come with the shareware version of Wolfenstein on the disc. Install to C. Oh, good. Awesome. Utilities have been successfully installed. Your GameStar disc comes with id Software's Wolfenstein 3D Episode 1. Yeah, go ahead and install that too, um, though I think I have it already on here, but... Uh, can't go wrong with another copy of Wolfenstein. All right. That's good, but let's go ahead and check out this uh, GameStar directory and see what we get here. So here's the program. Interesting how this looks closer to like the dog bone controller of the NES. I wonder if that was the design they were going to go with at first. The mapping can be done by first click on a joystick button, then on a key switch button. Repeat the process for all buttons. So it's click and click again. And then we can assign them. It looks like those are assigned to the arrow keys right now. The A button is assigned to five on the numpad. The B is on space, and then those are the turbo buttons, and then we have down and enter. Seems like select should maybe be escape. There we go. Yeah, enter makes sense. And I'm gonna change it to control and alt for A and B. That's uh, so it automatically switched the turbo buttons. And it looks like I can change the turbo speed over here as well. And there we go, we have platform.joy. And I guess we're done, so download the current mapping. Okay, press the GameStar load button. That'd be this. I, I guess that was it. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna try Wolf 3D right now. What I want to do, Jill the Jungle. All right, so, wow, yep, that's, <laughs> that's already working. That makes sense, I mean, it's just inputting keyboard commands. On the other hand, I already hate this D-pad. Like, yeah, I'm pressing down and it's going up in some cases. It's just like it doesn't rock around at all how it should. That is the worst. So, getting rid of that. Um, so yeah, let's just go up and down. So we should have start as enter, and it is. That's awesome. Uh, that's... yes. So escape and enter work, let's see. <laughs> oh! And yeah, we can't actually shoot anything. Dude. Well, I mean, it works exactly as it says. Uh, it literally is... Dude, that's friggin' cool. Because I've seen other adapters for like, uh, you know, serial and of course USB things like that for um, uh, NES controllers and stuff on PCs, you know, new and old, but I have never had one that just plugs into the keyboard and not only that, but is also, con you know, configurable to be whatever you need it to be, which that's awesome. Okay, actually the D-pad is not as bad as I thought it was at first. That joystick though is the worst. The D-pad seemed to be usable, at least for those uh, few moments that I was playing Jill. I'm gonna just press escape. Check that out. Enter, 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 enter. Escape, 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 escape. Enter, enter, enter. Like, that's... I mean, I don't know why I'm so impressed, but uh, it amuses me. Um, let me see. Something in here that I can use with Turbo. Duke Nukem 2. Okay, so I don't have the right controls mapped, or the right keyboard commands mapped to the controller. So let me see if I can actually use the buttons that are on here to remap on the fly without having to go into the software. If you wish to enter any or all of these preset functions, just follow these simple steps, okay? Press, hit the key and release, the game star set button. Okay, there is an LED on that. It's just really hard to see, but it is lit up. Press a button or direction on the gamepad, then press a keyboard key, and that should be it. That seems pretty simple, so 
Again, that's working just fine. Wow, yeah, no, it totally worked. So I remapped a control to A right there and then B shoots. So I can, you know, just do that or, all right, so there's the, there's the rapid fire. Uh, honestly, I can do it way quicker like this, but um, you could see that in that software, I was able to change the speed of the rapid fire. So that's cool. There we go. Rapid fire in the game is way better than on the controller. <laughs> I don't need rapid fire hardware. So about the only other thing that I really wanted to try on here is, of course, getting an original NES controller to work because I mean, that just makes sense, right? I wish I had some more obscure, you know, kind of odd NES controllers, but honestly, I'm not a big NES collector person. All I have are just these original uh, control pads, which I'm just curious if it'll let me like switch it out on the fly now that the computer's already turned on. So, all right. Uh, GameStar controller is unhooked. I'm gonna plug in this thing here. <laughs> so it seems to have reset it, or maybe I accidentally hit the reset button on the GameStar when I was plugging it in. Either way, I need to redo the controls again. See how, how good I am at doing this. Hit set, hit the controller button, hit that, hit set. <laughs> There's some sort of strange mental disconnect about playing DOS games with an NES controller. I've never experienced that up until right now, and... <laughs> oh, this feels good, man. I've always liked the simplicity of the NES controller, you know, because obviously it just sort of grew up playing it. Uh, friends' houses, just absolutely everywhere. <laughs> it's just a ubiquitous kind of controller, and it has that phenomenal D-pad that's... They just got it right from the beginning, as far as I'm concerned. You got controllers like the Gravis Gamepad, which, you know what, as much as I enjoy it, I've never liked the D-pad on there, and the buttons even aren't that great either. But this... Oh, this feels as it should. Okay. Well, you know, obviously we gotta do the one last test. All right. We have to try Duke 3D because... Uh, you know. <laughs> Oh crap, I don't know what settings I have this on. I should probably check. All right, so I have uh, set these to some controls that should work with like, you know, space, alt, and control. <laughs> control, control. And then we'll see how it plays. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep, yep, works perfectly fine. So I just have the uh, D-pad sort of turning and then moving forward and backward. I've got, this is jump, that's shoot, and then that I think will be open the door. Start just presses enter, so I probably should have remapped that to something more useful. I wish I had run on, let me put run, there we go. Oh, it's select, that's right. Yep, don't need run on, that is way too quick for this D-pad. So the NES controller is not the ideal Duke Nukem 3D controller input device thing. But hey, it gets the job done. And it's amusing. <laughs> That's what's most important. I just peed in Duke Nukem 3D using an NES controller. That meets the LGR seal of approval. Yeah, we gotta try Wolfenstein 3D before the video's done. This will be a good use for that turbo button for sure. Well, once again, I just gotta say that I am mighty impressed with the Dynapoint GameStar. What it's doing isn't necessarily unheard of or even super unusual or anything like that. It's just an adapter that converts another kind of input over into keyboard commands. I have quite a few devices that do that kind of thing. But this one just stands out to me for how obscure it is, at least for the entire kit like this together. I had no idea it was supposed to come with a controller until I found this boxed. And then, of course, it stands out for being an adapter from the early 90s that is meant to convert Nintendo controllers over to a PC. There are other things that I've come across that, of course, convert NES controllers over to the PC, but not from 1993, and certainly none that are an individual box that can be programmed. That's really cool. And also the fact that you don't have to use that software. It's completely unnecessary. You can do everything you need to from the box itself. 
Still, I'm glad that I have the software, and I'm glad that, once again, Daniel sent this my way, so thank you very much once again, sir. This has been a lot of fun to explore, and it is now probably my preferred way to convert NES controllers to all sorts of PCs. The fact that it can be converted to PS2 ports with just a simple adapter and play it on practically any PC that I have is just awesome. This is a very versatile and easy to use device. And I hope that you enjoyed watching my video about it. If you did, then awesome. Perhaps you would like to see some of my others. This was almost an Oddware episode. I was this close to calling it Oddware, but for whatever reason, I decided against it. Anyway, this is practically Oddware. So if you like this kind of thing, watch my Oddware series or just any number of other stuff that I do here on LGR every Monday and Friday. And as always, thank you very much for watching.